You're listening to Tim and Megs. Well, in 1999, Australian television drama was a very different beast. Some may say it was a lot better. Remember Blue Healers, Sea Change, Water Rats? But certainly when it came to gay storylines, they were, they were fairly rare. And when they did pop up, they were considered as progressive or breaking new territory. Jake Blundell is our next guest. He played Tony Hurst on the hit Channel 7 series All Saints, which is now available on their catch-up service. It was a fairly brief moment in time, though, before he was snuffed out after being rejected by his homophobic father. G'day, Jake. Hi. Well, that's that's uh, a bit of a blast from the past, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true story, though, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it, was a, it is a true story. And it was, um, as you say, Tim, it was a very different sort of time in, in television. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tony, Tony Hurst was uh, a, a bit of a, a character who broke some ground, and um, it, it was something that I was you know, very pleased to be part of. And um, I know that the producers on All Saints were also very sort of excited about having the opportunity to give the housewives of, of Australia and the, the people who love their dramas um, a gay friend. It just seems so weird, though, doesn't it? Does it feel weird to you that, I mean, it wasn't even that long ago, really, the, the turn of a century, and it was considered progressive, whereas now it's just so standard in dramas and, you, mm. you know, you don't bat an eyelid. Well, I think that's right. It, it, the strange thing is that it was uh, considered progressive. That I think we'd gone backwards a bit in a way. I mean, my dad played uh, my dad on the show in that final episode uh, in 2001. Oh. Um, that was your real father. Yeah, that was that's Graham Blundell. So they brought him in. Oh, right. The one Forgive episode. us for not having done our research. Look, that's quite all right. He, he had nothing to do with the show at all um, until that one episode and uh, he sort of showed up. He was a horrible, horrible character. He was only in it for about 10 minutes, but we hated him, didn't we, man? He's a very good actor, though. Yeah, it's because he's a very good actor, yeah. He is. And, uh, look, you know, and I think that for them it was sort of an interesting counterpoint. But he, he'd been in these shows like Number 96 and uh, uh, the programs in the in the 70s that were more progressive. There was nudity. There was a gay couple, I think, in num- Number 96 that lived together in one of the apartments we the we've taken a big step forward and by the time we got to the 90s we we've gone backwards a bit you're right actually it's sort of a, a, an ebb and a flow because i remember my mum telling me about those number 96 and all of those and how rude and lewd and late night they were but but by the time all saints comes around we have and gp i think was on around the same time and they were doing gay storylines and it was considered really quite taboo and it was compulsive viewing why did they kill you off, Jake? Why didn't they make this character permanent? Oh, Tim, that's one of the great questions of my life. I, you know, but we're not in control <laughs> of that. Uh, Tony, you know, I was settling in for the long haul, albeit, you know, just dipping in from time to time into All Saints Western General Hospital. But, um, no, in the, the producers in their infinite wisdom decided that it would be, um, uh, you know, entertaining, I suppose. Um, yeah. I, I can't deny I was a little disappointed, um, both in, in the fact that, he was killed off, but also sort of in the way that it, he, he went. But, um, again, you know, th- those sorts of decisions are out of the hands of the actors. We just go where we're told to go and say what we're told to say, really. And a big part of it was the development of Connor's character, wasn't it, as well? Because he f- saw the homosexuality as a bit alien to him, and so he had to sort of work through those feelings and realise that Tony was a person that he could really relate to and like. And these days we call that gay panic, Megs. Yes. Gay panic, which was when we looked at, because we've been watching it back, Jake, on, on the catch-up service, and Megs yep. has never seen these episodes before. And it's fascinating mm-hmm. to watch it in my son here, Megs. He's 17. Yep. And watching it through his eyes is fascinating. He's like, like seriously, yeah. this, this guy is threatened by this little gay wall, ward clerk? Yeah. Why on earth would that be the case? Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Uh, uh, but I, I think that was in, uh, sort of an important process for, for the character of Connor to go through. Yeah. And for Connor to go through that progression, I think um, yeah, it was quite important uh, to, to, to see Tony as a person, to see Tony as just a friend, uh, to, to for the gay part of it not to be really the defining characteristic, you know, and I think that was an important part of what, what they were trying to do with Tony as well. They didn't want the character to be, you know, particularly sort of overtly camp or, or um, stereotypically gay. It was more about somebody who just sort of happened to be gay but in every other respect was just part of the team and got on with the job and um, became a friend to, to those people in the, in the team. So that was the direction, was it, Jake? That they, they didn't ask you to camp it up, they didn't ask you to tone it down, like they just wanted you to be a yeah. ward clerk. That's right. They, that's right. 
that that's that's it and uh, you know it was about making sure that he was relatable to people, uh, to that, that he that he wasn't particularly. It was that I think they were they were concerned that he they wanted him to be quite sort of diligent and quite a sort of uh, sensible person. Um, maybe to go against some of those stereotypes of flamboyance and 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 sort of campness. Yeah, and his love of football and the Cougars would have been a big part of that as well that as was, allowing him to connect with Connor, I guess, as they have a, a common link and a shared interest. Yes, I think that's right. And, you know, it, it again, defeats the sort of stereotypes that um, – but the, perhaps there was a perception that football was a sort of, a you know, an ochre Aussie thing and it wasn't the kind of thing that, that a gay person might be interested in. But, um, yeah. yeah, but and it gave – I think it gave Connor and, and Tony a, a connection point and, and something that they could really sort of get behind together. So, um, yeah, as you say, that the football part of the storyline was, was important for that. Tell us a bit about the character, Jake. Um, he, he got to have some sassy lines throughout his <laughs> short-lived period on the show. He did. Um, sometimes the sassy little one-liner, you know, dropped in in the middle of a conversation between uh, Terry and Connor or one of the other, you know, to lighten things up a little bit sometimes um, as well, a bit of, a bit of comic mm-hmm. relief. Um, I, I found, though, that it was important to position yourself in, in the right way if you wanted to get on camera as a minor character Um <laughs> So, you know, there are techniques um, about that. When you drop your little one-liner in, you do it um, while standing very close to to Georgie Parker's character. Um, <laughs> you sort of require them to turn it into a two-shot um, so you get <laughs> on, on, on screen at that time. So uh, mm. little techniques as you go along, you know, um, uh, were, were important. But, um, but no, the character was, was, was lots of fun. Um, uh, you know, you had to sort of deal with some of the, Initially, some of the tension around him him being gay with his he liked Connor as a friend, but Connor had these issues um, being able to sort of accept him. Um, but look, as as we went along by the sort of second season, um, I think he just sort of was a, a lot of that a lot of those sort of tensions fell away. The character did go through a separate sort of storyline about contracting Hep C um, from a needle stick injury from from Pippa Grandison's uh, character. Uh, her character came on. In, in one episode, and uh, she faked uh, kidney stones in this one episode, you know, so that she could get pethidine. Um, and in the process of, of getting pethidine, there was a syringe left mm-hmm. out on the counter, and um, I got a needle stick injury. My character got a needle stick injury from her syringe and ended up contracting Hep C from that. And uh, the sort of difficulties faced um, with that sort of health. He wasn't story. around for very long, but I'll tell you what, he did a lot when he was there. Then he, <laughs> then he also developed a casual drug problem, didn't he, which oh, ultimately right. claimed his life. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, a casual drug problem. He apparently had a boyfriend in New York that had left him and he came back and decided to party his life away at the day club. And uh, Yeah, and then and Connor the- advised him strongly against that and he was extremely defensive of him that entire uh, final episode, which I think was just trying to mark his transition from being slightly homophobic to being, you know, fully fully embracing Tony. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And so... Um, you know that was a, that was a very tense, uh, very very tense moment. But at the end, I think as you as you say, Connor had fully come around and, and fully developed in that way. And um, uh, yeah, it's just a shame yeah. that I had to die to 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 do it. <laughs> he gave his dad a gobful. Yeah, it was good. I loved yeah. that scene. I don't understand why Tony couldn't have given him a, a gobful. It had to be. All yeah. Connor. Well, I guess it's just the hold his dad had o- over him. But then Connor was able to tell him, you know, it's your fault. I've got to dig into it a little bit because it sounds like you, 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 you've named it as one of the mysteries of your life. Like, why did this character progress? <laughs> I got over it, but yeah, go on. Are we, are we, are we bitter? Are we resentful? <laughs> <laughs> Can you not look at it on the screen anymore? Uh, I no, anyway. it's, uh, I, it's, it's difficult to look at it on the screen anyway. A, any, a lot of actors will probably tell you that it's a um, slightly uncomfortable feeling. but Really? Something that, yeah, well, I mean, you know, for me it was anyway. I, I don't know. It always seems a bit mm. strange. but. Um, no, I'm I'm okay, but I'm, I'm I'm no longer an actor. I've I've gone off and done other things now. So um, that's disappointing to hear because this character, like I tell you what, it really made an impression when you when you watch this back on, uh, when you watch it back on the catch up, he really just he comes along and he does he he really cements himself as one of the characters and he feels mm. like one of the permanent characters. And I know that there seem to be, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. A, 
period where he was there for a certain period of time and for whatever reason he ra- he racks off. Yeah. But then all of a sudden he's back again and, and for yeah. a viewer you think, ah, there you go. He was popular enough, they brought him back. And then all of a sudden they knocked him over the head with the frying pan. Yeah, it was very sudden. I thought it was very shocked me. I didn't think they were going to do that. But they obviously did it for Connor more than... For yes, the character yes. of Jake is at least my viewer impression because they needed to round his character off a little bit. Mm. Well, I have to say your 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 ideas about it are as valid as anybody's because nobody ever talked to me about um, why they were doing it. <laughs> All I, I found out by receiving the script in the mail and, uh, you know, <laughs> as I read through the script, I realised that that might, that might be it unless I come back from the dead like one of those um, daytime soaps <laughs> in the States. So. Mm. You probably never pondered this question as much as <laughs> fan viewers like us, but would the character be written the same today, do you think, or would it be completely different now that we're 20 years on? Well, I, I don't know. Um, it's a difficult question to answer. Um, Surely you wouldn't have Connor standing there with his sideway glances thinking that the gay <laughs> ward clerk is trying to crack onto him. Like, Surely yeah. you wouldn't get away with that. You would hope not. But look, the world has sort of been turned upside down the last year or so, so it's yeah. difficult to know how they would how they would do. I, I would I would imagine not. I mean, you, you'd think that the, the the fact that that the character's gay is is just not sort of that that relevant salacious storyline that uh, is, is is a shock to everybody that people have to get over. But but that doesn't mean you wouldn't necessarily have a, a homophobic character and a character who might have to work through his. Is it, or maybe perhaps not. Perhaps homophobic is a bit strong, but somebody who may not feel comfortable, you know, doesn't doesn't have much experience with gay people or, or whatever. Um, perhaps yeah. that would still be, you know, something that you'd see in a storyline. But you, you would think that it would be different. It would be handled um, differently. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think the, the producers really did a, a great job, and I know that there was a lot of sort of enthusiasm about being able to do this, uh, about being able to have a character. Uh, who, who happened to be gay, who, who, you know, ultimately... But I have to say, you know, you, you've, Jake, you've, you talk about how they just wanted to almost normalise it is what you're saying. Mm. Yet if they were really trying to do that, why did they make you dress in that ridiculous oh. in that ridiculous garb? The jumpers were hideous. The jumpers. I, oh, the jumpers were amazing. It, it, every week, you know, you it'd be more them? gaudy than the last one, more, you know, more clashing <laughs> colours and stripes. And, it was incredible, you know. I don't know where they found them. They're just quite, quite hideous. You, 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 you see your costume and you say, well, that, I would never wear that. Who would wear the, those clothes? And I said, yes, but it's different. It works differently on television and the colours work differently. And, oh, yeah, right. Well, believe me, they stood out. I'm surprised you didn't get a rash with all that artificial fibre against oh, your skin. Oh, well, exactly. I've got to ask, what was it like at working with the rest of the cast too? Because you were with big names, popular names, gold Logie winners, and, and you came in quite late as well. So mm. to an established cast, I've heard lots of information that suggests it was a very comfortable set, a very relaxed Relaxed set, a very professional set, but still, for you at the time, walking in uh, with some of the the incredibly experienced actors around you, must have been daunting, surely. Look, it was daunting. The, the, it, you know, it was intimidating. The, as you say, they're huge names in the business. People have been around for a long time. Who are you in awe of? Go on, tell us. Who, who did you watch oh, well, perform their craft and go, wow? Well, you know, I mean, you can't go past Georgie Parker for her sort of. She's like a planet, and and the other everybody else is sort of like a moon that orbits around her because she's <laughs> just so she's so big, um, and you can't help but sort of uh, be a little bit awed in her presence. But um, Eric Thompson is a, just a terrific, lovely man, and he was very supportive of, of me on the set and very warm. Um, and Je- you know, so Jeremy Cumpston is yeah. who played Connor. He's a doctor in in real life. Um, and he, he had already yeah. um, obtained his medical degree at that stage. So he was not only an excellent actor and very diligent, actually, in the way that he went about his work, um, you know, it always knew his lines, always hit his marks, never, I mean, the, the technical side of it, he was very, very uh, diligent. But he was also <laughs> sort of, you know, chucking in his two cents worth on the medical front as well, even though they had they had advisors to help with the medical things, but... Um, so it was having. It was oh, great having never something. Never insert a syringe that way. It would never happen that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's a little bit of that, but but it was great to have an extra voice in the room to sort of workshop some of these uh, these medical things. But um, look, you know, there, he was very very impressive um, uh, on that front. Um, uh, Libby Tanner, um, yeah, incredible. And I Our think favorite. That, oh yeah, she's just Our wonderful, favorite. wonderful to work with. But but 
ultimately you can't really go past um, Jude McGrath, you know, Von. Yeah. And and it was, it was very it was very sad to, to hear of her passing a few years ago. But but she just was so effortless. She was just so clean and clear about what she was doing as an actor as well. There was no fuss. It was just simple and direct and sort of elegant. And there's you know, it just is a it's a it's great to watch somebody work that way, cut away all the rubbish and just go straight to the sort of the, the, the simple heart of it. Um, I've seen her in a few interviews and su- such the opposite, I have to say. We do Vaughn impressions here. All you have to do to act like Vaughn is clench your back teeth together and say something <laughs> like, quite cross. Like, oh, no. ah, that's, that's, that. I'm getting flashbacks now. I'm getting... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, listen, you've been very generous with your time. What are you doing these days, Jake? I'm a I'm a media lawyer, a defamation lawyer. So I, I decided oh, to go to law no. school and um, better be careful the way we edit this. Then <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Look out. <laughs> uh, it, um, so it's uh, yeah, it's a it's a very different sort of life now. Um, but do you miss acting? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because it was unreliable, or the actual craft, or what? the craft is good, but it's you know it's stressful and it's difficult, and you have to sort of go go down these rabbit holes and test and challenge yourself in a way. Um, and use your emotions in a way that, um, you know, can, can be a little draining. And, mm. and on the other side of it, when, when you're not doing it, which is most of the time, you're, you're desperate to, to, to sort of get a gig and you're waiting mm. for the phone to, to ring. It's nice to be able to be sort of a bit more in control of my destiny, have a, have a job to go to and be able to just do my work. Um, as an actor, you have a few difficulties being able to do that. So uh, that, I found that frustrating after a few years. Yeah, predictability is not always a bad thing, I have to say, especially in a professional sense. Jake, thank you so much for talking to us. I know it was a bit random getting a message from people like us, but we're watching it and, happy you know, we're, yeah. we're just amateurs, but we, we we love our Australian TV. And I tell you what, putting this 17-year-old through an education in Australian TV, he yeah. didn't even know who Molly from a country practice was. And, I, and wow. that's a failing of me as a father. Oh, not at all. There's a lot to know. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that, that's fine. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing that we can, you know, do the catch-up stuff and, and see a lot of this great old TV that's uh, that's been made that's uh, still there. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. still relevant, especially too. All Saints. Yeah, I love it. Oh, great! Yeah. Good on you, Jake. Thanks, Thanks so much, guys. Today. Have a lovely day. All, all the best. Thank you. You Bye. too.